I'm uh, here tonight in my capacity as patron of Dada. And I began to wonder, what does it mean to be a patron? And um, the first dictionary in English most people know about is uh, Dr. Johnson's dictionary, Samuel Johnson's of um, 1755. You knew that, didn't you? Well, actually, it wasn't the first one. There was dictionaries before Johnson, but Johnson had a particular sort of way with words. And so I thought I'd look at what he said a patron was. And he says, it's one who countenances support or protects. Um, so supports or protects. And then he says, commonly a wretch who supports with indolence and is paid with flattery. <laughs> Which I thought was wonderful, you know. So that's what a patron does, and uh, Ruth would never pay me the flashing, but she gave me a glass of champagne, which is far better. Um, we'll refer to uh, disability rights. I'd just like to say a few things about that, because from the 19, late 1960s onwards, disabled people were fighting for rights. The ability to have access, to have respect, to have legal support, without betting for it without being patronised. And the build up of rights was very slow. From the Old Persons Act of 1970. In 1979, the first report was published calling for civil rights legislation for disabled people. It took until 1995 to get the substantial legislation through the House, and another 10 years to improve it. And then along came the current government, or the last one, and said, we'll have the Equality Act which weaken many of the duties. And we see, see what the current government is doing, which is not entirely encouraging. But the one thing which has happened in that time is arts venues now have to take account of the needs of disabled people. I remember when we were campaigning for audio descriptions on films and on television, and we were told it was technically impossible, it was impossible, no one wanted um, signing or um, putting titles over stage plays so deaf people could enjoy it, would told would disturb the other customers. And what we find now is when we do it, the other customers are absolutely delighted. I was at uh, on the Opera Place in London, and I was delighted because I couldn't speak Italian anyway. And uh, the announcements were in English, so I knew what was going on. So we have advantages. We're building on a solid base, but we need to protect what we want and to go further. And in trying to articulate the voice of the people, this can be done in many ways. It can be done in committee rooms, it can be done in corridors, it can be done by demos. But one of the most effective ways is to change people's views, people's attitudes. And this is where the arts are so powerful. And what's happened in disability arts over the last 30 years is disabled people have found a way of expressing ourselves, are putting forward our point of view in the world, of the world, in a way in which non-disabled people are beginning to understand. And I think some of the images of disability, some of the projects which you will participate in during this festival, actually does change perceptions. And we've come a long, long way from when disability arts was not going to say in a daycare centre making baskets. Fine baskets though they were. <laughs> I even made some myself, I just thought the cold hands to prove it. And I think that we actually need that voice. I know when I, I do a bit of photography, not terribly good photography I have to say, but my friends can always spot when a photograph is taken by me, because it's taken from a certain angle. I can't reach any higher, and they spot the photographs, but it's a way of the world. It's a way in which some of the same people see the world, and that's illuminating for them. And you won't find your own examples of this. What Dada is about, and has been since its start, is giving disabled people that platform. And when the festival started, it was a very local thing here in Liverpool. Then Ruth had this mad idea she should go national, so she did that. Then she said, oh God, there's a river. That leads out to the sea. Oh geez, there's more countries out there. Let's go international. So she did that. NASA are sending a probe soon to Mars. <laughs> I have to have good authority. There will be a uh, from Dardar Fest 
in there and we'll have the view of disability from a Martian perspective in not too distant. But actually, Nanda is now one of the world's major arts festivals and those of us who live in Liverpool are very proud that this is the city which has brought this about and lodged out to a very small number of people. As Dada goes ahead, they keep collecting awards. We need a bigger office for Ruth to put them all in. And uh, the last one is the Leave Award, which this Dada Fest has already won. That's all the good news. There's still some news which is not so good. Is we need to break out of the disability community and the arts community. We need to get out into the business community because arts are about changing attitudes. It's all very well in Duncan Smith saying, all these disabled people can work, even those who died three years ago. <laughs> and um, there's a slight problem that the employer will give you the job. And the problem is with most employers, and there's probably a few here tonight, I don't mean to insult them, but what the hell. Um, they employ a tiny part of people's talents. They say, can you type, or I will hire a typist. They don't say, can you also paint watercolour? Can you sing? They leave out all that talent, which somebody has said, we'll hire you to type, or we'll hire you to take legal cases, or we'll put the local authority. Very small part of a person's personality is used in employment. And if employers could look further on a very tight definition, they would see people with a range of talents which those employers are envious of. I would love to have that organisation. So we need to broaden that out. And we need to bring the business community in the northwest into Dada and get Dada out to, to the business community. We've made a start, but we're not there yet. Too many employers are still very, very blinkered at what disability means. And if we support disability arts, we're helping some handicapped folks to entertain themselves. Well, David Hurst entertains himself, I guess. Um, all artists entertain themselves. I'm told Picasso have quite a good time. <laughs> but actually, they produce art. And disabled people are exactly the same mold. And we need to recognize that amongst disabled people, there's an enormous range of talent. And Dada brings some of that out. The business community now needs to come in to see it, to witness it, and take it on board. If they do that, Dada will be a great success. But frankly, even if they don't, Dada's going to be a great success. You've all got the brochure. It's going to be a smashing couple of months ahead. Enjoy it and have a great festival. Thank you very much.